Welcome to this journey through Advent this year. I've been so excited. <laughs> I've just got this sense that God is going to do something quite special in many, many hearts as we journey through this season this year and look at the material that we're looking at and sense him drawing and attracting us to the things that he has for us. I've started off in this place which is a border, it's a boundary land between two countries. It's a place of crossing over, it's a threshold. And as I'm standing here, there's a sense of it being a thin place. It's a sense of there being angelic presence watching over the crossings. So join with me then in this little church as we cross the threshold into our journey through Advent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, thank you that you come close to us, to be close and to walk with us. Please help us to open our hearts, our minds, all our senses, as we listen for your invitations today. Grant us the grace to intimately love you as one who is fully known, to generously share what you've given us as we faithfully serve you, and to care compassionately for the world just as you do. Help us to be fully present to you today, Lord. We quieten our hearts as we draw close to you now. Let's pause, become aware of God's presence with us and all around us. We look at a short scripture verse. John the Baptist was the forerunner for Jesus, getting people ready. He echoed the ancient prophecy of Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Luke 3 verses 4 to 6. So today we set out on our journey together and the first few days of our journey will all be about preparation actually. We'll reflect on preparation for the rest of this week and then we'll begin next week thinking about Jesus coming, his incarnation. Most things in life that are truly worth something actually require preparation. I remember very well running two marathons at different points in my life and each time I needed to train for months before I was anywhere near ready and even then it wasn't so great. But months of training and preparation. And I'm not so great in the garden, that's kind of Alison's job really. She loves it. But if we want to grow our own vegetables, the ground needs to be properly prepared so that it's ready for the seed. And even then, further preparation is often required to look after the seed and the soil and the environment whilst that seed grows. This kind of lengthy preparation would have been seen as 
quite normal and necessary by the Celtic saints who brought Christianity to these British Isles in the fifth century AD. It's quite different to our modern way of thinking. Our modern world is very instant. We become very accustomed to pressing a button, something happens, and it happens immediately, and the quicker the better. So our modern instant world doesn't lend itself to long periods of preparation. We can see a great example of this Celtic preparation in St. Aidan, who was tasked with setting up a monastery on Lindisfarne, sometimes called Holy Island, for the east coast of England in 635 AD. He and a team of monks went to Lindisfarne and they were given the island to set up this monastery. But rather than diving straight into the task that was in front of them, and even before he and the team of monks had somewhere comfortable to look after themselves, their own accommodation, they decided that something was needed first. I wonder how often we dive right into action before properly taking stock and then sometimes we run out of steam as we get focused on the tasks and we lose sight of the real goal. Those monks believed that they had to get rid of anything that was evil on the island before they were able to build a monastery there. So the first thing they did was they wanted to dedicate the whole island to God. So as we think about that and as we also draw from today's reading, I wonder what's currently in our lives that might be like a mountain in God's way or crooked, or out of shape, maybe a little rough. Aidan and his monks set up a large wooden cross and then prayed and fasted by that cross for 40 days. They ensured that their perspective was incredibly focused before they set off to build the monastery. I wonder what we're hoping for or anticipating as we prepare for our journey through Advent. We're going to practice short times of contemplation in these daily reflections. So right now, let's take a time of quiet and rest. Quiet our mind and our imagination and just allow our heart to be drawn by the Holy Spirit what is he attracting us to? What's shimmering for us today? Let's have a moment of quiet, resting in God's love. Let me offer this closing prayer. Lord, please help us to prepare well, rooting out any weeds that might be in the way and focusing on the prize like a honed athlete that you might find a straight path into the depths of our hearts in these 40 days. Amen. Amen. Oh I hope you've enjoyed my thin place for the day. I'll see you again tomorrow.